So it's getting to that time of the year where in most parts of the country, especially the south, fish are getting ready to spawn. The largemouth are getting up shallow, you know, they're starting to make beds and stuff like that. So I've kind of narrowed it down. When I'm targeting those spawning fish, I've narrowed it down to like four different baits, kind of presentations that I'm gonna have tied on pretty much everywhere largemouth are spawning and the way I target them. I had a lot of success, you know, catching bed and fish, catching sight fish over the years. Every single bass I've caught has almost been on four different baits. So I'm gonna show you what those are. Anybody that's watched me over the years knows one of my number one baits is a wacky worm for a lot of that springtime, but I use it a ton when fish are spawning and I'll tell you why and kind of my approach with it. So I use a zoom fluke stick, green pumpkin's my go-to, and I use a two alt decoy hook and it's got a small little fiber weed guard on it which i like because it makes you more efficient you don't get hung around docks if a fish is up around some sticks or something like that you don't get it stuck right over one of those spawning fish but i don't like o-rings with the zoom fluke stick i just hook it right in the middle i prefer i think my hookup ratio is better just hooked in the middle with no o-ring because your hook's the appropriate direction and this flu zoom fluke stick's a little more durable a little stiffer so it lays perfect hook right in the middle like that but what i do with this bait is this is kind of like what i would call like my blind sight fishing or when i see something way ahead of me i use this bait like going down the bank is why i keep in my hands majority of the time and when i see what might be a bed what I, when i see maybe a fish sitting there from way way off or just a light spot a green spot whatever looks like a spawning nest from far away this is what i throw at it the cool thing when you throw this wacky worm at it from a long ways away at one of those bedding fish. Generally, as everybody knows, you know, there's a buck and a female. Well, for some reason, I'm not sure why, when a bait comes over before the fish know you're there, usually that female will eat it about nine out of 10 times. If one of them eats it, it's going to be the female. So you don't have to actually power pull down, you know, and like aggravate those fish to catch them. You might catch that female on first cast with the wacky worm from long distance. That's my favorite way to do it. It's a lot more efficient than having to stop and fish for each one for 15 minutes. This has caught me a lot of fish and saved a lot of time. My second bait that I like to sight fish with is you may have seen, I basically won Hartwell Elite Series between the wacky worm and this bait. This is just your plain old greenfish tackle ball head shaky head. I like the ball head because the hookup ratio is a lot better. If you haven't watched my shaky head video, go back and watch that and I'll explain why. But basically the hookup ratio is a lot better with the ball head with no spring lock. Use a zoom trick worm in tilapia or green pumpkin. Not really anything too te technical, just a natural color. And I like the shaky head for sight fishing on lakes where you're not fishing for 10 pounders, you know, like Lake Hartwell. It's got some good fish in it, but you know, like a three and a half, four pounder is a really big fish. And the shaky head's one of the best baits for getting those fish to bite. They, they always eat it. It's got good hookup ratio. And even with that light line and stuff, on majority of the lakes when you're not fishing for true, true giants, it's plenty enough to get them out of the bed. And if they're not around heavy cover, then it's my most effective and first choice for actually sight fishing, for throwing in that bed when I didn't catch them on the wacky worm and have to stop and fish for them. So both of those finesse baits, the shaky head and the wacky worm, I like a spinning gear, obviously, but I use a 610 Hartwell Magic in my Art Cobb series, and it's got a lot of tip to it, so you won't break off those fish at closer range, you know, when you see them or something like that, when they're not a full, full cast away. It gives a lot of forgiveness, and you won't break that Yozuri 10-pound leader or your braid. So it your landing ratio is pretty good with that light finesse setup. When it comes to actually, you know, power pulling down and sight fishing for one of those spawning bass, I keep that pretty simple with the shaky head, but a lot of times you might see a seven pounder, you know, one that you don't feel comfortable throwing that 10 pound test to, and you want a little more meat to get him out, or maybe he's up in some bushes or at the walkway of a dock, and you want to be safe to make sure you get that fish in the boat without the light gear. So my bait cast setup I keep at all times ready for all spring for sight fishing is just a bigger flipping rod or, or a bigger rod with heavy line. I keep 20 pound tests on a rod, 20 pound Yozuri fluorocarbon on a rod to flip to those sight fish. And I use a Texas rig. I use a lighter weight than I would for like pitching. This is a 5 16th ounce. I like the smaller weight because just less weight to when you set the hook, pull through their mouth, things like that. But a 5 16th with a 3 alt flipping hook and a zoom speed crawl. And I only leave one rigged, but what I do is I'll leave green pumpkin on it majority of the time right there. And then when I see a fish, maybe I can't get him a bite, need to see my bait a little bit better. 
I keep a white speed crawl on the deck ready to just flip back and forth when I see one of those fish I'm fishing for. And I use this setup on those bigger fish. Like anytime you don't feel comfortable throwing that finesse gear to them, but keep it really simple. White speed crawl or green pumpkin speed crawl. And I like the speed crawl because it's a really small profile. And if that fish, you know, a lot of times spawning fish tend to nip at your bait and they'll suck this whole bait in generally without any, not, not getting the pinchers or not getting something like that because a three out hook fits perfect in this bait and you've basically got nothing but hook when they eat it. It's a really, really good high percentage landing bait for those heavier cover situations. One last bait that I always have tied on in the spring, spawning time, kind of a new, unique bait. A lot of people haven't used this very often. This used to be a super popular bait and it's kind of faded out and I don't know why because it's super, super productive when fish are up there spawning. That's a floating worm. This is a zoom trick worm. Methylate is the color. And uh, this bright, funky pink color, for some reason, when fish are spawning, they really, really don't like it. You know, it comes over them, it makes them agitated, and they eat it really, really well. And this kind of is the same concept as the wacky worm. Whereas when you throw this worm over a likely bedding area or a likely spot, that female will eat it majority of the time before the male does. And if they don't eat it, it's a really good bait, like, you know, I mentioned throwing the wacky worm to likely looking areas, but sometimes the water is just a little too dirty, or maybe you're on a lake with a lot of shallow cover, whether it's grass or shallow vegetation or sticks or bushes, whatever. The wacky worm can just kind of be exhausting. You can't go fast enough because there's too many likely areas. So that's where this floating worm comes really, really effective because it covers a lot more water and you can, if those fish don't eat it, they'll at least come up and look at it. And then you can switch to the wacky worm, the shaky head or the speed crawl to actually catch them. But this will at least make their self, make them show themselves. So when I'm rigging this, I rig it a couple different ways. I always use it on spinning gear. I use my kind of shaky rod. It's just a little bit slightly stiffer spinning rod, but it doesn't really take much to hook the fish that eat this. I use a pretty big, just worm hook, three alt or four alt, with this and i rig it two different ways if i'm on a really really clear lake with uh you know where the fish can see your line things like that i'll actually tie it like a carolina rig i'll put a barrel swivel 12 14 inches ahead of it with a small piece of usually 20 pound yozuri fluorocarbon because the leader's just basically there to add some you know to hide your line a little bit so i'll use 16 or 20 pound yozuri fluorocarbon with that barrel swivel and the three or four out hook. And that'll keep your bait down a little bit more. But you see, I got this one rigged right here on a lot of dirty water lakes. The fluorocarbon is kind of unnecessary. And uh, I just go straight braid, 15 pound Yozuri braid. I use 10 on all my other finesse setups, but with the floating worm, a little more of a power fishing setup, go 15 pound braid, just tied straight to the hook. The one thing you have to be careful on is depending on what brand hooks you're using, Make sure with this 15 pound braid, they have a very, very sealed hook eye because 15 pound braid is really thin. So if you have a hook, maybe it's a, you know, not the highest quality hook and the eye is not sealed real well. If you hook a big fish, it might slide around, get twisted and actually come out that hook eye. If I've been using some bad hooks before, I've had, had it slip out and you just got the knot and no more hook, which you don't want to happen, obviously. So make sure your hook's got a good sealed eye, whatever it is, where it, where it can't get out of there just hook your word take this rig style and i fish it with short twitches you can vary your speed but this is just a really great search bait when there's just too many bedding areas when there's too many places where you think one might be and you can't hardly slow down enough to throw that wacky worm then this is a lot better option for that to, to make those fish show themselves but when it comes to fishing for bedding fish you know i keep it pretty simple the finesse setups can get a lot of fish to bite, but sometimes you need something a little bigger, you know, when on big fish lakes or a heavy cover situation. So I kind of keep those four baits ready to go all spring, keeps it simple, leaves me without a thousand rods on the deck. And I know about every fish I see, I can catch with one of those four baits.